Well, a pleasant morning to each and everyone. Please turn your Bibles to the book of Romans. And later on, Ephesians. Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 to 11. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. Finish your spiritual service of worship, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For through the grace given to me, I say to you, to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to proportion of his faith. If service, it is serving, or he who teaches, it is teaching. Or he who exhorts, it is exhortation. He who gives with liberality, who lead, and he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love without hypocrisy abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord, verse 12, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Turn your Bible again, Ephesians 4. Starting from verse 11. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man to, to, to the measure of the stature which belongs to fullness of Christ. Next, the first spirit. First Peter, starting from verse 13. First Peter 1. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in the spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust which were yours in your ignorance. By like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we stand before you this morning for the righteousness of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because in and of ourselves, if you look to us, Without your sin, we 
and you leave it consumed because you are up for it. Now we thank you for your Son of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we can have you direct access to your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for what you did today, this morning. Thank you, Lord, for that. And worthy as we are, even and worthy as we are, yet you have chosen us to be part of your ministry. We acknowledge, Lord, that all these spiritual gifts that you have given to the church, again, it's only by you. Each and every one of us who are a believer, who is a believer, is endowed with given a spiritual gift. And it's our prayer, Lord, that we might be able to see the relationship between that gift, those gifts that you have given to us, in relation to our ministry, in relation to our walk with you. Speak to us now in question. Giftedness and holiness are not the same thing. I believe that it's in every one of you, one way or the other. Only to the ministry. Entering any calling in life should be a serious matter for prayerful consideration, searching of God's word, and keen observation of providential things. through the calling to the ministry as a minister is called to be an ambassador the ministry is not something a man chooses a young man does not look through the one ads and not finding a position then turn to the pastor. Or you were not able to pass of God, then you come to Phineas. As if the ministry is of a lesser value. Some parents. Send their children to seminary because they are not good in mathematics, not good in science, or not an eloquent one in terms of speaking. So send, they send them to seminary. In other words, you mga tira tira. You go in go. Walang direction sa buwan, walang alam, ipadala sa seminar. But I do believe with all my heart, whether you call that a belief, but on the basis of the scripture, it is the highest calling. To serve him full time in the ministry because it is God Himself who called you to this particular ministry of shepherding. I am not 
that say that if you are a graduate of accountants or accounting or management or engineering, that is not a good vocation. But how are you going to deal with that? How are you going to use that as far as the ministry is concerned? So, manawa ang pagtingin ko sa minister yung wherever you want. But as far as shepherding, calling into calling me into the pastorate is concerned, full time in the ministry, I'll say, for me, is the highest one. No regret at all. When my parents and my relatives encouraged me to take a role, I told them for what purpose? So that I can defend you in court? And I told them, no. Since I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in 1970, until today, no regret at all. Serving the Lord in the ministry. There are temptations, of course. Because right after graduation, I'd like to take a role. So I took the entrance exam at the University, at the university of Santo Tomas. Because it's just across San Paolo Bible Christian Church. No and pure because I am a BDH major, Bachelor of Theology, no special order. So Santo Tomas did not accept me. And I told and I said to myself, it's all right. Let me go back. To my covenant with the Lord, serving Him full time in the ministry. The ministry is not something you choose. God is calling you to the ministry. The New Testament church begins to be a God called man. He is willing to make any sacrifice, pay any price, forsake all and build a church in the name. And after the pattern of Jesus Christ, he said, I will build my church. And it is interesting that when God calls a man or a woman into the ministry, He gives him or her a spiritual gift. Everybody, if you are a believer, each and everyone, each and every believer has a spiritual gift, at least one. Probably some have two or three. But everybody has a spiritual gift. And how should we explain this theological concern of spiritual gifts? These gifts of grace from God are to be understood as the equipping and empowerment of the believing followers of Christ by the Holy Spirit. For what purpose? So that they can participate in building up the body of Christ. So when we talk about spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts are the capacities of believers to express and communicate the knowledge and power of Christ for the purpose of edifying the church. Every believer in the body of Christ is empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each individual, 
with each one individually or as heroes. In 1 Corinthians 12, 11. And we have these several uh, gifts listed in Romans 12 and the book of Ephesians, the one that we read. They come from the time giver and particularly from the Holy Spirit who empowers believers for ministry in the church. It is a gift. It is not earned. It is a gift. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit in believers' lives that empower them to minister in various ways and make them effective in the ministry so that the church is edified. So you see now that this spiritual giftedness is not produced by the natural abilities and talents that a person possesses to varying degrees, but rather the demonstration of the Spirit and the power who is actively working in and through the believer for the edification of the body of Christ. God the Son is the sovereign honor of all spiritual gifts. Christ has merited this gift, this gift for his church. Ephesians 4, 7 to 11. And the, the Apostle Paul, as we have just read, explains how these gifts of grace received by his believer individually. This distribution of gracious gift is performed in part with the spiritual leader he has appointed in his church. We in turn are equipping all believers for ministry in order to build the body of Christ. So everybody has a gift. You are gifted. Not in the sense that you are fond of receiving your honorarium. We have a lot of gifted pastors. Fun of receiving honorarium. Not gift. They are gifted. So here, you have that gift. If you have the gift of teaching, then teach. If you have the gift of giving, then give. If you have the gift of preaching, then preach. They are given for ministry functions and lead to practical activities within the church. Gifts are given for the common good of all believers. That gift is given to you not for personal consumption, but for the body of Christ. It's given to the church. Given to equip all believers for the every member ministry to which they have been called. And this gifts, by the way, should be used in ways that are consistent with the spiritual principles. Spiritual giftedness is to be used for the purpose of building up the body of Christ. That's the purpose. Paul's instruction to the church of Corinth is the same. Let all things be done for building up. So it is necessary in the work for believers to periodically examine whether they are using their giftedness for the building up of the body of the church or the body of Christ. Spiritual giftedness is to be used in an orderly way and under biblical leadership. The Apostle Paul teaches that gifts should be done decently and in order. Should be used rather decently and in order. 1 Corinthians 14 14. He 
But since God is not a God of confusion but of peace. Spiritual gift. And spiritual gift that has to be used at all times within biblical bounds. As the Apostle Paul also writes in his instruction to Corinth, if anyone does not recognize this, he is not to be recognized. First Corinthians 14, 38. All use of spiritual giftedness must at all times be consistent with the Bible, with the inspired spirit word, with the inspired word of the Spirit of God. They need to minister according to the instruction of this word, with, of course, grieve the Spirit. Even when the spirit is so everybody examine what is your spiritual gift. Use it for the glory of the Lord, for the church. Every spiritual gift in this will produce this kind of ministry. Ministry that is pleasing to the Lord. Ministry that edifies. At the same time, we need to understand that all spiritual gifts must be used in faithfulness with attitude of gracious humility for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the ministry, you are brought up. God has given you this gift. Not for you, but for the church. Use it for His glory and honor. But at the same time, we need to underscore that it does not necessarily mean that you are gifted. And that is Shall we say determination? Shall we say nakayo ay banal? Nakayo ay spiritual? You can be eloquent in speaking. You might have the gift of preaching. You can preach the word of God. But if you don't walk your talk, how is that? It's a mere hypocrisy. Spiritual gifts. You have this. Because when you talk about gifts, giftedness, along with the ministry, it should be manifested in the way you live your Christian life. Because the ministry of calling is a holy calling, and therefore it involves a holy life. A blameless life, not faultless. Because prerequisite to the call itself and falling out of genuine conversion, there must be this godliness, holiness, as you are being gifted, you have this gift. Along with that, as you are using your gift, then it should also be seen in the way you live your Christian life. This God you live in. Godliness. Also you have this holy desire. Well, hard the desire for the work of the ministry. You have this holy motivation. The call must be motivated by love for the glory of God. 
It doesn't follow. That you are affected. When we see your life, the life is not in accordance with the will of God. Ay napakagaling po sa anumang lengguahe. Ay naman ikaw ay mga pagbigay. Ito na, if that is your gift, it doesn't follow. Giftedness and holiness are not the same thing. And I want to illustrate that. On page one of this point, and I shared it with the uh, AC members in one of our meetings. I'd like to explain that giftedness and holiness are not the same thing. Of course, I don't personally like Samson as a hero. Although he's listed as one of the heroes in Hebrews 11, 32. He's not a good example. Not a good example for the kids. He is gifted. His anointing is undeniable. But why in the world would God call a person like Samson to this ministry? But then God foresee a witness in his moral fiber. I can understand God's choice of Joseph. God's choice of Daniel. And these are men I like to preach about. As they foreshadow. Rise in the New Testament. And when you talk of Joseph and David, they do not disappoint us. You know them, they refuse to bow. So I can say, God, you made a good choice when you called Joseph and when you called Daniel. But I don't find it easy to agree with God's choice of Samson. This man is a gross and barrels man. None of us would want this kind of leader here in our country or in the evangelical circles. We would not know what to do with him. He was anointed, yet he's a mess. You think about it. The world honors gifted people. We put them on pedestals and idolize them. We wish we could be like them. Such as gifted sports stars, gifted speakers, movie stars, leaders, TV personalities, and even inventors in societies, etc. In fact, the world calls these people gifted. Due to the spotlight of these gifted people, it taints the rest of our thinking. It is all's attitude regarding giftedness that has caused us to formulate our own thought patterns regarding the subject. And we either feel that we are not gifted if we compare ourselves to them. And we cry. You see, in the Old Testament, Samson is gifted by the Spirit in a remarkable way, killing a thousand armed men with a jawbone is no mean. But if Samson has got spirit, should not be seen growing in holiness? How can he be so empowered by the Spirit? And yet show no patience, humility, or self-control. But the Bible is always 
receiving that is tension that most believers are, are, are unaware of. You see, it is possible, it is possible to have the gifts of the Spirit, yet lack the fruit of the Spirit. First Corinthians 12 and 14, Paul tells us that gifts of the Spirit are skills for doing. Abilities for serving and helping people, though they can be used for other things too. But in Galatians 5, 10, 2, 10, 3, Paul tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is character traits of being. Qualities such as peace, patience, gentleness, self-control. Then in First Corinthians 13, 1, 2,
the fruit is the proof of spiritual growth.
Minyo, oh nagagalit na naman si Internet mo. But how many times behind the puppet, we remind each and every one of us, and the scripture is being preached, and as we see the beauty and the majesty of Christ, yet after all these messages, we come back to our own, own self again. Use that, not for yourself, 
but for the identification of the body of Christ. For the glory of the God who gave those gifts. Giftedness and holiness are not the same thing. Walk the talk. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning's message. Lord, thank you for confronting me personally. We confess before you that many times people who have stumbled because of the way we live are Christian life. Forgive us. God, thank you for your Son and your Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry that you have entrusted to us. Was us, Lord, to be faithful. Was us, Lord, to live consistently. The message that we preach Sunday after Sunday. Was us, Lord, to conform to the likeness of your Son, our Savior. Thank you. 